Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, we're going to be painting up some scenery, showing you some really quick and dirty tips to get your scenery painted up and on the table fast. So the scenery that we're working with today is some of the new sets from my friends at Monster Fight Club, who were gracious enough to send me some of these. Um, they've got a bunch of different of these sets that were part of their Metropolis Kickstarter, and they're now available in local game stores, which is cool. So the most of the pieces we're painting up today are from the Industrial Cargo set here, which is a mixture of barrels and pallets and you know stuff that makes good little scatter terrain great for kill team i'll probably mostly use this for the cyberpunk and kill team um but you know the little barrels uh, they can be used everything comes on their own um it comes in different colored plastics you maybe could even use these unpainted but if i'm playing i really want everything on the table to be painted so uh, i think what i'm going to do is take some of these small pieces and leave them individually stuff that's as small as individual boxes and barrels might be cool for for bases or something but when it comes to putting scenery on the table, I really want to be putting these together into some larger pieces. So we'll grab some super glue, start gluing some barrels and boxes to pallets, make some larger uh, chunks of scatter terrain that we can put on the tabletop. So alongside the industrial cargo set, there's also a couple other sets. There's a cyber city set that comes with some cool little bits that we use as objectives. The set I'm actually most excited about is the chain link fences. I think those are an exciting addition to the tabletop. Uh, city streets comes with some different accessories. So I'm gonna grab some glue and start uh, just assembling some of these real quick. Um, not much to this, I'm just gonna use a little bit of super glue and glue some of the barrels and boxes onto the pallets. And you know, when it comes to scenery, scenery is a very functional element of the war game for me. Uh, it's something to make the models look good. It's the background, it's the backdrop. I'm never gonna enter a piece of scenery into a, a painting competition. Not that I do that a lot um, these days. And I want something that's functional, that looks good when it's on the table. I don't care too much what it looks like if you look at the underside of the scenery. I probably won't you know, paint that at all. Uh, so I just kind of go in for a little random scatter of barrels and pallets and boxes and stuff like that. And you'll see the assembled pieces in the painting portion of the video, which we'll go ahead and uh, time skip a little bit because gluing boxes, not so exciting. So once that's all done, I've got a few different pieces of scatter train. I'll move on to putting together the chain link fences. The chain link fences are come in a box with 10 of all the same piece, plus a whole mess of little connectors. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, cause again, this is really about providing cool looking functional background to player games. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the chain link fence now, um, prime it up assembled and not worry too much if you get an odd glimpse of some of the gray plastic um, after it's painted. It's a pretty inoffensive color and it'll kind of just look like a little bit more uh, dust and grime. So with a couple different sections clipped together, we've got this cool little rectangular chain link fence area. I think these are gonna be very playable, cool pieces of scenery. Uh, I'm gonna try to experiment and prime some black and some in a rust color. And you can see which one you like better. I, I think I know which one I'm gonna prefer, but uh, I'll let you make your own judgment on that. So our secret weapon today in painting scenery fast is gonna be this rusty red oxide primer. Starting with this gives a better result faster than starting from black. So to kick things off, we've got one of the pieces from the uh, Cyber City and I'm just gonna to touch up the primer job. This was sprayed with the, uh, the spray primer. Uh, as you can see the Vallejo uh, red oxide red primer, it is a very, very similar color. It does dry a little bit darker than the spray can, uh, but once we start painting over it, it won't matter at all. We're gonna kick things off with a quick dry brush of silver. Uh, whatever silver floats your boat is just fine. This happens to be one of the Vallejo game color ones. Um, with dry brushing, you know, you can see it wiped off most of my paint on the blue paper towel there. And then once you kind of get most of the paint off, you're just gonna whisk the brush back and forth across the mini until the raised areas of the mini have picked up the silver. I'm just using a very, very cheap, flat um, brush that I think maybe I got at the local dollar store um, for dry brushing, that's really all you need. And so throughout this video, just to give you a little idea of what I'm intending with this video, what I'm gonna do is take these pieces step by step and throughout the video, you can stop at any point in the process. With the rusty red primer and 30 seconds of silver dry brushing, now you've got a little scenery piece that you could put down on the table and it's gonna look a lot better than if it was unpainted. Now we're gonna take it a few steps further, not too many, not nothing too tricky, but if you wanted to stop here, I think this red and silver scheme is basically color ready, you know, game ready. It's a couple of colors. Um, if you had a table full of these as objectives, that'd be cool. 
So now to contrast that, I also painted up one palette of barrels with a black primer just to kind of show you the difference between the two. And it doesn't take any more time, you know, it's the same amount of time to dry brush some silver on these. But it's often the case that our eyes read black and white kind of as nothing. Like it's kind of in a situation like this, it looks like there's one color on this, not two colors. Whereas, you know, if you compare this to a miniature that was primed with the rust red and then dry brush silver, it just looks more painted. It looks more vibrant. It looks more interesting. You know, compared to this palette of barrels here that was primed red, same thing. This is just primer and silver. The red looks a lot more interesting. I like the red undercoat so much better. I'm going to do everything else with a red undercoat. Super fast dry brush of silver. I'm just going to blast through, you know, 10x speed, the rest, but all the other pieces, they're getting the, the red primer plus a quick dry brush of silver. And with those all done, the dry brushing dries super fast. We can move on and take the, all these through a few more steps. Now, the first easiest thing you can do to add a little more depth, a little more interest to your silver dry brushed red primed scenery pieces is just to add a quick black wash. Seems like every single paint company makes these. Uh, I'm using Nuln Oil here, but Vallejo's would work well. Army Painter's Black Wash would work well. And I'm not putting this all over, especially since this is a piece of machinery. I'm just kind of giving a black wash, uh, mostly to where one part meets another part. If you were to uh, put a black wash you know, all over that kind of springy coil element in the middle, all the inside of it would turn black, which isn't what I'm shooting for, but just kind of wherever one part kind of joins with another part, smap a little black on there, and that'll kind of give the whole piece a little more depth of shadow. Um, it'll also read as a little bit of you know industrial griminess. And I think that's a the single fastest, easiest improvement you can make to that simple red silver scheme. The other thing you can do is play around with different colors of primer. So this is one of the palettes that I gave a quick gray primer to, to make it look more like it was a cyberpunky, sci-fi, you know, plasticky palette instead of metal, um, just to give another color. And, you know, with a, this is also a Krylon primer, a what kind of this light gray primer plus a quick black wash is a super easy way to paint something simple like these palettes. These have some little recessed details. They say Megatech on there and just dropping a little bit of the black wash into the recessed areas will help pick out those words and make them a little bit more legible. And you can leave this here, or you could go in with a quick dry brush, as we'll do in a minute, and uh, make all the details and edges pop a little bit more. So next up, we have some boxes. On one hand, these are deceptively simple. They're just basic, basic boxes, um, designed to look like, you know, fold over top cardboard boxes. But getting a, a nice effect on these big, wide, flat surfaces can sometimes be a little bit challenging. If you have an airbrush, which not everyone does, you could airbrush these to get a, a nice little gradient on the sides of the boxes. But I wanted to show you a couple different things that I tried um, that turned out all right with these boxes without an airbrush. So one thing I'm doing here with this first set, and I'll do a different thing on each set, is to put on a little bit of the Skeleton Horde contrast paint and then dab it off with an absorbent paper towel. Um, dabbing it off with a paper towel creates a little bit of a stipply, uh, rough texture that isn't actually there on the miniature, uh, which can break up the, the big wide panels some, um, and helps to spread out the contrast paint, because what you don't want is streaks and pools of the contrast paint on the sides of the boxes, the way that you would get if you brushed it on and then just left it there. So brushing on some contrast and then grabbing a little bit of paper towel and dabbing off much of the contrast with the paper towel, I was reasonably pleased with how that looked. Um, it is important when you're doing that, uh, look for these blue like shop towels. Uh, if you use a, grab a standard paper towel from your kitchen, um, you may find like a white paper towel, you may find that it leaves unattractive little bits of lint and stuff on your miniature. So just make sure to use a, a lint free paper towel when you're doing this and just kind of dabbing at the top of the boxes, leaving a little bit more of the paint at the bottom. Um, and it kind of gives a cool, I think it gives a cool texture to the boxes. It makes them look a little bit like they've been sitting out at the docks for a couple days. It makes them look a little dirty, grimy, which fits right in with a uh, either a grimdark future or a cyberpunk future game, which is probably where I'm using these. 
if I was planning to use these for a more modern game, like a, you know, Crisis Protocol or something, I might have gone for a darker brown and something that looked a little bit more like your standard corrugated cardboard. Um, but I wanted to try something different with these. So for this little box on the end, I'm going to give it a quick, simple base coat of uh, medium brown. Uh, and then we're going to draw, put some dry brushing over that later to see how well just a smooth surface takes with dry brushing. Um, and as you can see, what I'm doing here is I've got all these boxes attached to a popsicle stick, which is in turn on top of one of the new Jolly Lark painting handles. The uh, late pledges are available for those now, but it works really well for painting little separate pieces like this to uh, glue a popsicle stick on top of the handle and then glue the little pieces on top of that. So we'll give that a, a quick base coat of brown. Um, and then for the middle boxes, uh, what we're gonna do is grab the new Citadel gray shade paint, which I haven't really had a chance to use very much. And I'm curious to see how it'll do on something like this. That's a pretty subtle effect. It does drop a little bit of light gray into the cracks and crevices there. Um, I think it's a better effect on the barrel than on the boxes. You might be just as well to prime the whole thing with a slightly darker gray, um, but not a bad effect. And I, and I suspect it'll, it, it'll add a little bit of texture um, and variation to the big flat side of the boxes that it will look good under a quick dry brush later. But if your goal is to be painting stuff fast, the goal is to do less. So I also primed up a stack of boxes with the same red oxide primer that I used on the metallic stuff just to see how that would look underneath a quick dry brush. So this is the same oxide red primer. I just grabbed a little bit of the Pro Acryl khaki and a big fat dry brush. I'm just gonna give these boxes a kind of a, a fast, messy dry brush and see what I can do with just two colors of paint on this. And you know, the thing that's nice with boxes, they really can be any color. There's no wrong color of box. Um, so whatever color primer you use, whatever sort of color you dry brush, these boxes could be blue or purple or whatever. Um, these big flat sides of the boxes are actually taking a dry brush pretty well. Um, it's not too hard to get a nice little kind of textured effect there if you vary the direction of your dry brush strokes back and forth. Uh, this brush is maybe a little bit bigger than ideal to get into the spots where the boxes meet each other. But as you can see, it's actually a way to kind of force yourself to create some shadows there. Uh, the bigger the brush you use, the bigger the shadows will be because your big fat dry brush can't fit in those cracks and crevices. Um, which is you know, actually not a bad effect. Um, you can kind of force yourself into doing a little more dramatic shading by using a bigger brush while you're dry brushing. Another good trick for getting different results and getting a nice variety of colors on the table is to play around with different colors of primer before you head to your painting table. So here's another stack of boxes that I primed black. Uh, I'm gonna give them a very quick dry brush, much, much lighter dry brush of the same khaki color. And even though I'm doing the same thing that I did to the red primed boxes, it's a totally different effect. So next up, we're gonna jump back to our red and silver painted pieces and gonna grab a little bit of sponge. I think this little bit of sponge came out of a blister pack of some sort of miniatures I bought. Should rip it up to give it a little bit of an irregular surface and grab the bright color of your choice. I grabbed some basic, there's kind of bright primary blue from Pro Acryl. And with the sponge, just gonna kind of dab, dab, dab in the middle of all of the panels. Um, this technique also works great for any sort of aged metal that would have been painted in the past. So by kind of just dabbing the sponge in the middle of the panels, being very loose with it, we're gonna get the effect of a um, you know, little ATM, a little kiosk here that was blue a long while ago before it's seen some uh, heavy use and acid rain and, and all that good stuff. So just kind of going around the miniature, dabbing the blue on and any surface, uh, kind of breaking up the big flat panels, um, but taking care to leave, we're not, we're not trying to repaint the miniature blue, uh, make sure to leave some of that red and silver visible through the blue. A big part of being a more productive painter is knowing what steps to take in what order. Um, that's partially why I've left this video in the order that I actually painted it, rather than showing you, you know, step one, step two, step three for this piece, I'm jumping back around, you know, jumping back and forth between some of the different scenery pieces. So you have a sense of how you can efficiently organize your painting time. Uh, you know, for example, I did all the silver all at the same time, and then I dry brushed all the khaki all at the same time. 
Um, and now I'm going to go back and do the blue at the same time. And sometimes it does make sense to switch colors. Here I'm going to put a quick, I just had the idea to put a quick yellow stripe at the top to break up the blue. Again, you could skip this. I think this would look fine without. And you kind of want to try to do all your colors at the same time. But it's also nice if you can take multiple steps on the same miniature at the same time. So since I had this in hand and was, was staring at it, I went ahead and did the yellow stripe right now. Uh, the blue paint was not even quite dry yet. You can see I got a little bit of blue paint on my brush, but if you put the yellow stripe on a little thicker, you can kind of just paint over the, the damp blue paint. And I wouldn't do this with a miniature, but on a piece of scenery where the detail level is not, as qu you know, quite, not quite as high, it works fine. So with the idea of doing you know, the same thing the same at the same time, uh, I'm gonna have one of the barrels, one of the individual barrels be blue as well, just to uh, add a little bit more color to the battlefield. Um, the barrels are just stuck on to this wooden expansion disc that I'm using on my handles uh, with a little bit of putty, so it's easy to just pop those off real quick so I can get at all sides of the barrel. Um, the expansion discs are good for larger models, but they're also good for multiple small models like this too. Uh, makes your painting handles go a little further. So kind of sim sim very similar to the little kiosk I was just doing, just sponge, dab, dab, dabbing a little blue. It sometimes feels weird when you're doing this to not finish painting the model with the color that's in your hand, but that sort of irregular look with some of the red and silver showing through is exactly what you're shooting for. And with that in mind, I'm actually gonna grab, kind of to continue the blue color scheme, I'm gonna grab the palette of barrels and rather than painting these barrels blue, which I think would be hard and doing things that are hard means doing things that are slow and we're trying to do things that are fast. Fast things means easy things. So for this uh, palette of barrels that I've already assembled, I'm gonna leave the barrels uncolored, but instead I'm gonna put some blue on the palette itself. Uh, sometimes you can run into limits of the sponge painting. I really don't want to get any blue onto the barrels and the, the sponge is an imprecise tool. So after sponging on some blue, I'm also gonna grab a brush, just grab a little bit of the blue and I'm gonna brush on a little bit more blue into some of the areas where I wouldn't have been able to reach it with the sponge without getting some blue um, onto the barrels itself, which is what I'm trying to avoid. So uh, the brush and the sponge can, can go hand to hand. Um, it would be challenging to paint something with just a sponge, but uh, maybe that would be a fun video. While you've got your sponge out, another great use for a little bit of ripped up sponge is adding some bright orange uh, speckledy rust effects. Um, again, if you're watching this, you haven't stopped painting your miniatures yet, but uh, you could you could skip this step. But uh, you know, every little bit of color and detail that you can add takes it you know makes the miniature look that much better. Um, and this is super fast and easy to do. You're just dabbing a little bit of bright orange kind of at random spots around the miniature. Uh, not a lot of rhyme or reason here, just something to add a, a little bit more texture and detail. And what I'm doing here is uh, with each individual piece, I'm taking different pieces up different steps. So you know, this piece has already been primed red, dry brush silver, washed black, and then you can see what adding the, the orange flex does for the miniature. Whereas in the final uh, collection of uh, terrain, not everything has had every step done. So you can kind of see a, a progression of what difference it makes and you can decide how far you wanna go. I'm really liking this little blue kiosk. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this up another level too. Um, the little bright orange, it can appear on the rusty red silver areas, but you can also get some rust blooms on the paint. Um, so you can add a little bit of the, the bright orange on top of the pieces that you've uh, sponge painted blue uh, or on top of the, the red silver. Either one works and they both look good. And you know, it works fine, uh, even on stuff you didn't black wash, these rusty metal barrels here didn't get a black wash, the bright orange still looks cool on them. So to prepare these two open topped barrels to uh, hold some radioactive goo later, I'm gonna give both of these a quick wash with some watered down white paint. Um, I'm not looking for a, a solid coat, I just want kind of a, a thin, thin down even coat. All right, so from here on out, we're really getting into some finishing details. Uh, I say in a lot of my videos that you can you can stop when you feel done, um, and that's just as true here. Um, at this stage, everything we're doing here is a little bit of kind of edge dry brushing. It's picking out details. It's it's adding that final little pop, which both doesn't take that long, um, and you can, you can do as you like. 
Uh, so for here, for these kind of plasticky sci-fi palettes, giving them a very quick dry brush of a bright white uh, brings out all their details. Uh, it makes the grunge look even a little grungier because you've got some of the brighter edges and just makes them pop a little bit more on the tabletop. So same thing, and I got my brush loaded up with some white, just gonna grab the boxes and give them a super fast white dry brush along the edges. Uh, you don't really hear a lot about edge highlighting, but on big surfaces like this, I think hitting it with a quick dry brush is the, the faster, easier way to do it. And the little bit of feathered texture you get from the dry brush is a good thing on these boxes. Once everything that needs a white dry brush is done with the same brush that already has some white loaded up in it, I'm just gonna tint that white with a little bit of the blue paint that's still wet on the palette uh, from paint, sponge painting the blue to make myself a little light blue dry brush. Um, and this is again a, a nice way to speed up your painting is if you can use the paint while it's still wet on the palette. Um, start to finish, all painting all of these was about an hour of painting. Um, and you can do that by just kind of bouncing back and forth between your colors, making sure you're doing all the same steps at the same time. With this light blue dry brush, you don't need to be too careful about getting it only on the blue, but my goal is to hit the areas of blue with a little bit of the light blue. If a little bit of the light blue spills over onto the, the rusty, crusty red parts, it, it's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, you won't notice, nobody else will notice. Um, but if you get a little bit of light blue on the panel edges, you can see how that makes them pop there a little bit better but staying away from the edges that don't have any blue on them. Again, keeping with the theme that if you've got a color on your palette, use it, grab that blue palette from earlier and hit the edges of that with a little bit of the light blue, just makes that pop a little bit more too. Another little detail you can add is just to grab some of the silver from your palette and go back over the blue areas and put a couple little patches of silver on the edges or just kind of a little dot dot, little scrapes and scratches of silver just adds a little more depth to the blue areas. This little kiosk is going to be the piece I spend the most time on, uh, which still isn't that much time, but still, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of black on the screen just to make the screen look blacked out. Adding a little more color and variety to some of the other pieces is also quick and easy, uh, especially if you've been dry brushing the pieces, you've probably ended up already dry brushing you know, some of the palettes that are underneath the boxes. With that, essentially what you've created is a shaded undercoat uh, with the red primer and the khaki dry brush and putting a thin coat of contrast paint on top of that pop gives it a pop of color. Any you know bright contrast color would work here. You could have made this green or blue or whatever, um, but the white dry brushing shows through the contrast paint well and the red oxide creates some nice shadows, especially under the red, and just brings a little bit more color to the battlefield. You can paint up your palettes different colors, put a little silver on, on the palette underneath the black one. That looks cool too. You can take that silver palette a little bit further, give it a quick wash of some Agrax Earthshade that'll bring a little bit of browns into it. Um, and actually, somewhat oddly, I think that adding a little bit of brown to the silver palette, it just makes the whole thing look a little less monochrome and makes the black boxes look blacker. Um, because it just kind of provides a little bit of color contrast to the black of the boxes. So quick wash, this is Agrax Earthshade, one of Citadel's shades on the silver palette. And that's a nice touch. All right, and with that, we've finished all of the little pieces and we're on to the fences. Um, and this is the, like, the quickest, the dirtiest paint method possible, big fat wide brush. I'm gonna paint the fences assembled because I'm not, I'm not that worried about it. Um, starting from that red oxide primer coat, um, just kind of give them a rough, uneven dry brush all over with the silver. And I really think that that's all that's needed. Um, if I wanted to spend a lot more time on these, I think it would look cool to maybe put some little grass tufts at the base. I think you could print out some posters, um, have some like old faded posters hung up on the fences. But really, this, I think this is an instance where just the the two colors is enough to get it looking good on the battlefield. With the chain link texture that these fences have and the chain link pattern being open, I would advise against trying to wash on these probably. I think if you tried to do any sort of a, a thin wash or watered down, you know, anything on these, you'd end up getting a lot of the paint caught in all of the little holes of the chain link. So the way this assembles together, it also kind of can fold flat pretty easily. 
So then to paint the inside of it, what I'm actually gonna do is kind of unfold it, and that'll let me get you know some silver on all the surfaces of the fence, and that's really all I'm trying to do. Could if you want dab on some bright orange, you could uh, spray airbrush or uh, dry brush a little bit of brown along the bottom, like where it's caught some dirt from the ground. But the these chain link fences have a lot of really interesting texture and detail on the fencing itself. And the basic oxide silver uh, dry brush on these, I, I think is enough for me to get these onto the table. With six sections of fencing, it gives you a nice little rectangular pen or guarded area or cargo yard. And that's neat. Wrapping up here, the only piece that I wasn't 100% on were the boxes. Uh, they look okay. I wouldn't be unhappy to put these on the tabletop, but I, I think taking them just one step further will we'll finish them off and... Uh, get me a little more pleased with these. The texture that resulted from blotting off the uh, contrast paint with the paper towel, I think it's a nice undercoat, but you need something a little brighter to draw the eye to the, the tops of the boxes. So with that, I'm just gonna grab some pure white and do a, a relatively light dry brush, uh, kind of top facing surfaces, top edges. This is probably half the amount of paint going on to the mini as we did with the khaki layer and really brings the boxes together. It makes that textured khaki layer feel a little bit more like a, a grungy shadow and just breaks up the surface a little bit more. So with the addition of that extra white highlight, I'm, I'm happy with the boxes. Just the contrast over the khaki, eh, it was just okay. They felt like the weak spot in the collection here, but the additional white dry brush pulls it together. When you want a scenery project to look cohesive on the tabletop, it does help to pick up the same colors in a few different places. Uh, if you just use different colors everywhere, it can make it look a little visually jumbled. So with that in mind, I'm gonna grab the same color red that I used for the red palette earlier and add a couple little red details to this white barrel that's sitting with the white boxes. Even though the boxes and the barrel are all essentially painted the same way, adding a little bit of red will kind of differentiate the barrel from the boxes and make it look like they came from the same manufacturer, but not look like I just forgot to paint the barrel. And here we go, final step on these little collection of singleton barrels is adding some Citadel Tesseract glow to those areas that we painted white earlier, especially when doing a wash. I wanna make sure that that white fully dried, which is why I'm doing this last. Um, so just kind of putting a thin coat of that Tesseract glow, it really does have a nice kind of fluorescent oozy green color over the white, and then if you want, you can add a couple little drips and drabs coming down the side. Um, it'll just tint the barrel a little bit and give you a nice little bit of uh, some green glowing-ish goo. Seems appropriate for uh, any sort of grim dark or, or cyber future. And there we go, it's a fun little collection of scatter train. This will add a lot of life and color to any futuristic battlefield. Uh, these were fun to paint, like I said before, about an hour start to finish to do all of the stuff. This is quick, dirty, easy painting. You know, get it painted, get it on the table. You can check out the links below to see the uh, Metropolis scenery from Monster Fight Club, to check out the late pledges for the uh, successful Jolly Lark painting handle Kickstarter. Hit me up with any questions you have about techniques or products, and we'll see you next time for another Jolly Lark.